In this video, we are going to be looking over this Canon FTB 35mm film SLR camera equipped with this fast FD 50mm f1.4 lens. And what I want to do here on video is put this camera through the types of tests that you would want to do if you were holding it in your hands and inspecting it prior to making a purchase decision. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show that this is the later style of the Canon FTB. The original was issued, I believe, in 1971, and a couple years later they changed the design of the timer lever, and they added a plastic tip to the wind lever, and so it's just some minor styling updates. I'm not sure if there are any other changes. But uh, be aware of those two things, and that that is a uh, that this is the later version. Now this camera uses a single battery for uh, the metering, and that's right in this cover. And I'm not going to put one in. The camera does not come with the battery, but I'm just going to show that the compartment is clean. And I had a battery that I used just to test the meter to verify that it is. Uh, responsive to light. However, unfortunately, these types of batteries are not available in the same voltage that they were back when these cameras were new. And so there's a problem making the metering work. And just be aware, there's different ways that people deal with that. But uh, I did find it, it uh, responded to light, but I did not check it for accuracy. So I'm just going to put that cover back in place. It's a little tricky to get those fine threads started. Yeah. Okay there. I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. There. Okay. So, uh, first thing I thought I would just step down through the shutter speeds here. It's at one one thousandth of a second. One five hundredth, one two fiftieth, one one twenty fifth, one sixtieth, one thirtieth, one fifteenth, one eighth. And now I'm going to start, I'm going to stop the lens down a little bit here. So here's at one. Now, the, the lens is not responding to this. Let's just set that on there. Okay, so the lens should be stopping down now. I had something on there not quite right. So here's an eighth of a second. Or maybe it's just the light is not allowing us to see the blades. Let's try that once more. One eighth of a second. Okay, I saw them in there. The fourth. One half, one full second, and the bulb setting where the shutter stays open as long as I hold this. And one thing I noticed is that these blades look a little bit, there's a little bit of oil down in there. They seem to respond very quickly but I did see that. One thing they do not respond quickly is that there's is a little bit of gumminess in the stop down lever. It doesn't spring back by itself, but the uh, the part down inside is very quick right here. And and we can watch watch this right here. So it's just this feels a little gummy. While we have the lens off, let's uh, look at the uh, the uh, mirror lockup. We can set that like that, and then we can watch the shutter in the back there. So those are working right. Let's flip that back down, and then here is for your flash cord. This camera does have a hot shoe, so flashes that are set for that will work on that. But if you need to plug in a cord, there's a place for it. Well, we have the lens off the camera. Let's just look at that. Uh, smooth focus. Nice smooth focus. 
The aperture ring has nice clicks and it does even have the uh, the locking position at minimum aperture. If we open it wide up here and shine a bright LED flashlight through, it generally looks pretty good except there's an area, see there over on the edge, I see a little bit of haze that's part way into it. It's hard to make this show up on the video, but there is some over there. Harder to see much from this side, but be aware of that. This is the breech mount lens mount for the Canon FD. Line up those red dots at the top. You have to make sure it's all the way over. Line up the red dot and turn it until it's tight. Uh, one thing we could do here is test out the uh, self timer. And so to do that we just pull this down like that and then press the button and we'll watch that completed cycle. And it did. Sounded really good. Let's look around the back here. If we pull up on the uh, rewind crank we can open up the back and this is the what they call their quick load system over here where there's this extra plate that goes in over that. And let's just fire the shutter while we're here. And we can see the film transport is working. Okay, the door, I feel a little bit of light residue or light seal residue along these edges. So at some point that should be cleaned out and replaced in these channels. I don't know how important it is to do right away. Nice substantial rewind crank. Top of the camera looks pretty good. The mode dial works here and you can lift this and pull it to set the different ASA value for your film. There's a little window right there to show, they're showing at 200. A, a thing to check your, your battery and to turn the meter on. This camera is fully mechanical so the only reason for the battery is the metering. You can still use it without it or with a separate meter. The base plate looks pretty good. It's got some scuffs on it, but it doesn't have any numbers scratched in or anything like that. And there is this wide strap that's pretty good. It's got some places for storing some extra cartridges of film. They're still elastic. I don't know if I'd trust those. Those are usually bad, but uh, you could probably store a roll of film in there. And it comes with this unbranded generic lens cap. So all in all a fairly good example of the later style Canon FTB. I think it was known as the FTBN though it doesn't say that on it any place.